William the Conqueror, the first Norman King of England. I was eight years old when my father died. My life was in danger, and I had to learn to fight. When I invaded England, I was a very brave man. I conquered the whole country and kept it safe from attacks. I was from Normandy, in the north of France, and my father was the Duke of Normandy. When my father died in 1035, the barons of Normandy didn't want me to rule because I was only eight years old. Many barons wanted to kill me. For ten years, my life was in danger. Finally, in 1045, I began to rule Normandy with the help of some priests. But a lot of barons were still against me. In 1047, a group of them tried to capture me. But I was able to escape during the night. I rode my horse to Poissy to meet King Henry I of France. A rebellion against me will be the start of a rebellion against you, I said. The king's army helped me to fight. We won a battle against the barons. After that, I fought many other battles. I conquered more land, and I had a big army of soldiers. I visited England and met King Edward. He had a lot of enemies, people who fought against him, and I had a strong army, so I offered him my help. He didn't have any children, so he offered me the English throne in return for my help. I also met Harold of Wessex, an English nobleman who was captured in France. I talked to the King of France and asked him to free Harold. Then I met Harold and told him, King Edward promised me the English throne. Harold was happy because he was free. He said, I'll help you to become king. But when King Edward died on the 5th of January 1066, Harold broke his promise and named himself king. I was surprised. I was Norman, but the English throne was mine. Now it was time to prepare for another fight. I wanted to invade England, and I had to plan my attack. I spent a lot of money on hundreds of new ships. I also trained a very large army of soldiers. In September 1066, my ships and soldiers were ready. We sailed across the English Channel on the 27th of September. The waves were high, but the winds were blowing in the right direction. It was a very dangerous journey, and we arrived at Pevensey Bay in the south of England on the 28th of September. When we arrived in England, King Harold and his army were in the north. They were fighting other battles there. The king had other enemies. Other people wanted the English throne, too. We got off our ships and waited. While King Harold and his army were quickly marching south, we were having a good rest. When the king arrived at Hastings to fight against us, many of his soldiers were tired and injured. After a good rest, my soldiers and I were strong, healthy and ready for battle. It was the 14th of October, 1066. King Harold and his army were in a better position because they were at the top of a hill. But they made a mistake when they decided to come down the hill to fight. Soon, we were in control and King Harold was killed. I became the new King of England on the 25th of December, 1066. My new job wasn't easy. I wasn't very popular among the English people, 
and I had to stop several small rebellions, and I still had to conquer the rest of the country. First, I took control of Dover, a port in the south, and London. I decided to rule England from London. I needed a castle to protect my position, so we began to build the Tower of London. Then, I asked my brothers to rule my new land, and I went back to Normandy to see my family. When I returned to England, I conquered the west and then the north. In 1072, the whole country was mine. Soon there was a new way of life in England. There were Norman laws, and there was a new language, French. The Normans became the rulers. I gave them lands, and the English people worked in their lands. I built a lot of castles across the country. I needed them to protect the country against invaders. I also asked my people to collect information on the number of people in England, and the farms and animals that they had. All this information was written in the Doomsday Book in 1085. I died in Normandy in 1087. The next two kings of England, William II and Henry I, were my sons. Saladin, the Muslim leader who fought against the Crusaders. I never lived in times of peace. In my land, there were battles during the whole of my life. I became a good soldier and the leader of a large army. I fought against the Crusaders and a lot of enemy tribes. I was born in the city of Tikrit in Iraq. I was the son of a rich Muslim leader. When I was a child, I lived in Syria. My parents and grandparents told me about the First Crusade, a war between Christians and Muslims. It was from 1096 to 1099. The Christians, who called themselves Crusaders, invaded our land to take control of the city of Jerusalem. Our people lost the war, and it was a terrible time. Our houses were destroyed and a lot of people died. When I was eight years old, the Crusaders attacked us for the second time. I saw a lot of people die. They fought for control of the city of Jerusalem. We fought to protect our land, our families, and our way of life. My parents told me the stories of our tribe. I learnt how to read and write, and I also learnt to ride horses. I wanted to be a great horse rider. If I could ride a horse, I could save my life. Soldiers fought battles on horses, and battles were part of our life. We didn't only fight the Crusaders, we also fought enemy tribes. When I was a young man, I met the oldest men of my tribe. They talked to me about the past. They're thinking about the wrong things, I thought. We have to think about the future. We don't have to talk. We have to fight and attack. I decided to become a good soldier to protect my culture. I also decided to become the leader of the Muslim army against the Crusaders. I needed to meet the strongest soldiers of my time. I went to the city of Damascus and I joined my uncle's army. His name was Shirku and he was a great leader. I became a good soldier with him. When one day my uncle died at a party, I became the new leader of his army. For the next 15 years, I fought a lot of battles. Some of them were against the Crusaders, others were against enemy tribes. 
We lost some battles, and we won many others. The battles were hard. We lost many good men, but we also conquered a lot of land. We could never rest because we always had to prepare for new attacks. More men joined my army, and I trained them well. I took control of Egypt, Libya, Palestine, Yemen, Gaza, Damascus, and Syria. I also became a sultan. The Muslim empire grew into a very big empire. I wanted to conquer Jerusalem, to take it from the Crusaders. But the Crusaders were our worst enemy. They were very strong, and they had a very big army. I decided to attack the Crusaders at the Battle of Hattin in 1187. We won the battle, and we took control of Jerusalem. I ended 88 years of crusader control of our land. But four years later, the Third Crusade arrived. The leader was King Richard I of England. His army was strong, and he won the Battle of Arshof against us. The king's horse was killed, so I sent him two horses. I also sent him a doctor because he was injured in battle. The people were surprised. I was a good man. Then we fought another battle, and my army won this time. In 1192 I made peace with King Richard, because we wanted to stop the war. We made an agreement. Muslims controlled the city of Jerusalem, and Christians could come to visit it. I decided to go back to Damascus because I was ill and my job was done. We had control of our land. On my way I thought about my life. I asked myself, will the Crusaders come back? And my answer was, they will come back. There will be more wars. It was so sad. I prayed for peace. In 1193, I was 56 years old when I died. Genghis Khan, the leader of the Mongolian Empire. When I was born, my parents called me Temujin. But later in my life, my tribe changed my name to Genghis Khan. My new name meant Universal Ruler. It was a good name for a man who conquered so much land. I was born in Asia around the year 1155. We were a Mongolian tribe and our life was very hard because we lived in desert land. We were nomads. We moved from place to place to find food and water. We also fought for land and stole animals from other tribes. When I was a child, my father was the leader of our tribe. He was a soldier and he trained me for war. You had to be a good soldier to stay alive in our times. My mother gave me hard jobs. She asked me to cut wood and carry heavy things from one place to another. In the Mongolian Kentia Mountains, winters were very long and cold, and summers were very hot and dry. Both my parents and the mountains helped me to grow into a strong man. When I was nine years old, my father took me to the Ongarat tribe, to arrange my marriage with a young girl named Borta. On our way back home, we were attacked by the Tartars, an enemy tribe, and my father died. I was very young to become a leader, so my tribe chose another man. Now my family didn't have a tribe. We became very poor, 
and I tried to help my mother. But our situation was very bad. Things didn't get better when my mother decided to marry a man who had sons. One day, I had a fight with one of my half-brothers, and he died. When I was 16 years old, I married Borta, and our two tribes united. I was a strong soldier, and I wanted to protect my family and my tribe. We hoped for times of peace, but soon we were attacked by the Merkit tribe. They killed many of our people, and also took my wife. I was able to escape, and I decided to take revenge. I planned our attack very carefully. I was so angry that I ordered my soldiers to kill every Merkit man. Our attack was successful, and I freed my wife. Porter and I had a good family life, and we had four sons. But life was not easy for us, because our enemies were always watching and waiting to attack. When I was about 20 years old, I was captured by the Taichi Ud tribe, and while I was their prisoner, they beat me, and I had a very bad time. When I finally escaped, I said to myself, this time my revenge will be bigger than ever. I had to plan a terrible attack. I decided to take my time to plan my revenge more carefully than before. I needed a large army, so I united my army with the army of another big tribe. Their leader was Ong Khan, a very powerful man. I now had an army of 20,000 men, but I needed more than a large number of men. I needed the strongest men of all, so I trained them to be strong. Our task was to eliminate all the other tribes. First, in 1196, we attacked the Tatars, the tribe that killed my father. I ordered my soldiers to kill every man in their tribe. Next, we attacked the Taichi Ud tribe. Then we moved on to attack the Naiman tribe. Soon, I had control over a large part of Mongolia. I had a lot of land and more power than ever before. My army was so big that I needed new ways to fight enemy tribes. I sent spies to get information, and then, when the battle started, we used drums and smoke signals to communicate with one another. My new idea worked really well. We won every battle. Several tribes united with us because they wanted to be on our side. My army grew to more than 80,000 men. My soldiers were very good at riding horses, and they had the best weapons. Very often, when other tribes heard us coming, they didn't fight. They chose to unite with our tribe, because they knew that we killed every man from an enemy tribe. My people thought I was the god of the Mongol people, and called me Genghis Khan. Then problems started. My tribe was very big, and we had very little food. I needed to conquer more land outside Mongolia. We moved on, and asked other tribes to join us. But some of these tribes didn't want to join us, because their culture was very different from our culture. They didn't want to become a Mongolian tribe. So we attacked them, and killed them all. I conquered a lot of Muslim and Chinese lands. I also conquered the central part of Asia, and took control of trade routes from China to Europe. My army had about 200,000 men now. During my life, I not only fought, 
but I also worked hard to look after my tribe. I asked my people to write our law. People shouldn't steal animals or sell women. People who broke the law should die. I was a great ruler and trained my sons to be great soldiers. Be prepared, I told them. Attack the enemy before they know you are there. The future of my empire depends on you. When I died in 1227, my empire was nearly 24 million square 